But what shall we play now? What shall we play now? Um, I could play some played up. If anybody has any suggestions for like small games, you can give some suggestions now. Something that you don't like, maybe takes like an hour to play, or something like a roguelike that's like not something you finish. If that makes sense, just something you like play and have some fun. Have some fun. What if I'm exclusively interested in anime games? Well, then my stream probably isn't the stream for you, actually. You are right. You're probably right. If you're exclusively interested in anime games, my stream is not really... Not really for you. I have played... Uh... <laughs> I have played... One anime game. Um... But, yeah. The stream, overall, probably not for you. <laughs> Um, we could play some plate up. I do think playing some plate up would be some fun. Uh, but I need something else to play as well. So suggestions are very welcome. Because I am, I don't really have any. Uh, I don't really have anything too specific to play. You did say deceive. Um, if nobody has any other suggestions, then we can play some deceive. Nobody has any other suggestions. Deceive does not bother me. I haven't played that in a while. I have not played that in a while. But I did want to play some played up. I mean, one run of played up doesn't sound like a bad idea. It's kind of fucking hot in my house right now, sadly. Uh, oh, go hunting. Don't feel like you need to hunt too hard or anything. Like I'm not like desperate for a game. I can just play some some played up, but I would like to play something else too because played up's a bit short. For um, like the whole rest of the stream. I have so many games. Gotta find something to play. Gotta find something, something to play. I do want to play Darkest Dungeon. Nah, that's that's like that's a good enough game. That that's save it. That's a save it for like uh like actually committing to it. I don't know much about it, but it looks fun. Yeah, I mean that that's um that game's pretty sick. That game is like definitely up there with some of the best games. I'd like to like actually like commit to that at some point. And it's also pretty fucking difficult. <laughs> so uh You can probably play it in a way that's not too tough. Oh, I did want to do the 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 Steam Steam Awards. I have to nominate games. That could be kind of fun. I don't know what to nominate, though. What actually came out this year? What the fuck came out this year? What are some games that came out this year? I don't know. I don't actually keep up with like new games, like playing them wise. I mean, I keep up with them in terms of like hearing about them, but I don't actually play them a lot of the time. And game of the year, what would be game of the year this year? I mean, a lot of people are going to say Starfield, right? I don't think Starfield's game of the year, though. Games released in 2023. Jedi Survivor was in 2023. Hogwarts Legacy, Spider-Man 2, Baldur's Gate 3. That's a fucking that's that's pretty high up there. Oh god, Redfall came out this year. Blech. Gross. Um Remnant 2. City Skylines 2. 
Mm, I think Baldur's Gate probably takes the uh Forspoken came out this year. Wait, really? Oh, it came out in January. I was like, what? Dude, that game came out fucking ages ago. I'm assuming Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, well, I mean you can you can you can put anything you want though. You know what I mean? Like what do you think is the, the game of the year? I think probably Baldur's Gate 3. It appeals to such a great group of people and they did a really good job of like making it uh like those types of games take a lot of work. Um Lies of P is decent as well. But I think probably yeah. I think probably Baldur's Gate 3. I'm going to go with Baldur's Gate 3. I think that is probably the most impressive game that's released this year in my opinion. VR game of the year. The VR game of the year isn't merely masquerading as regular reality. This game improves on reality, taking advantage of the medium of VR and pushing the boundaries of the virtual realm. I like that phrasing, actually. Um, because I hate when people just try and take regular games and stick them in VR. Like, that's not what VR is for, in my opinion. VR is for games that, like... You want it to be better in VR, not just it's cool that it's VR. You know what I mean? Like you want it to be like for the VR to like increase the experience. You know what I mean? Um, I don't play VR and I don't keep up with VR content. So this is always every year. This is like a question mark for me. Um, I don't really know what are great games uh, in VR. People are saying F1 2023, Ghosts of Tabor. Um, Ghosts of Tabor is a FPS PvP and PvE game. Interesting. Uh, Gorilla Tag. That came out on January 1st. I feel like that's kind of a cop-out answer. I mean, it did come out this year, though, I guess. X-Plane 12. Don't know what that is. I Expect You to Die 3. That kind of, I, like, got very few reviews. VR is like a small, small genre. Golf it? Is that on my wish list? Golf it? No. Is it VR only? No. Weird. I think this game been out a long time. Did it just come out of early access? Yeah, it did. Oh, fuck's sake. That does not count. Go fuck yourself. Your game has been out for super long. That does not count. Does not count. Go back home. You're drunk. Um, it counts, yeah. Our game has been out for three years, but we just released it out of early access. Um, Breachers. Tactical 5v5 VR FPS. Um, I don't know. VR is always a weird one for me. Ghosts of Tabor sounds cool. Seems like it's got good reviews. I really like an FPS, PvP, and PvE game. That sounds kind of cool. No idea if it's any good, but... Seems like an alright choice. I don't really want to pick F1 2023 because EA can kind of go fuck themselves. Although I think they do a better job with uh, F1, to be fair, than they do with the other games that they release every fucking year. Um, I mean, looking at like how many people have played it, Ghost of Tabor seems to be like one of the most played games. Labyrinth has been played a lot as well. Is this out of early access or was this actually like released this year? Looks like it was released. Co-op horror game like no other. Play with one to four friends online as you solve puzzles, collect items, and run from the horrors that lie within. Follow in the footsteps of Joan in the story mode or tackle procedurally generated maps that scale with your level and bring a fresh experience each game. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. Like a horror game with friends. Sounds pretty sick. I'm going to change the game category to just chatting for now. Um, I don't know. Like I said, uh, what you call it's always awkward for me because I don't play VR or keep up with VR at all. Like, that's, like, not the gaming... Like, that's, like, the one type of gaming content I really just don't keep up with. I'm not super interested in VR stuff. It's never really interested me. I think it's cool for the people who like it. Don't get me wrong. I really hate how there was, like, a very big trend of just 
changing everything to VR and people are like, oh, it's the next big thing in gaming. It's like, no, it's fucking not. It's its own genre and it'll be cool. And it'll be cool to see it like, you know, really capitalize on some things that you can't really have in regular gaming like PC gaming or console gaming, like it'll be able to create some new experiences that those things can't capitalize on, but it is not going to replace them. It's just not. So it was kind of annoying how everybody was trying to like convert everything, like Fallout 4 and VR. It's like, do we really need that? Skyrim and VR is like, do we really need that? Like, no, we don't. It's just a waste of time and resources. Um... So, but it will, it is cool that it exists. And some of the games out there are really cool. Don't get me wrong. Some of the VR games are really cool. I don't know. I don't know what, uh, what to pick. I'm either going to pick Labyrinth or Ghost of Tabor. Labyrinth has 9,000 reviews. Ghost of Tabor has 4,000. Uh, inspired by games such as Escape from Tarkov and DayZ. Mm, okay, I'm going to go with Ghost of Tabor because that interests me more. And I like that they're trying to do something special. Labor of Love. This game has been out for a while. The team is well past the debut of their creative baby, and being the good parents they are, the devs continue to nurture and support their creation. This game, to this day, is still getting new content after all these years. Um, what would be a good game for that? Call of Duty. Yeah, no, go fuck yourself. PUBG, and no. Apex Legends? Meh. Lost Ark? Meh. Uh, Euro Truck Simulator, Rust. First suggestion for me was DVD. Yeah, yeah. In terms of how much I've played, it's DVD for me as well. Um, Stellaris, Rust. I don't play Stellaris. DVD does not get Labor of Love for me. I mean, like, <sighs> they're doing a better job recently, but I still don't think they deserve it because they do kind of just like fuck over a big portion of their player base. Um, No Man's Sky honestly partly has my vote just because of just because of respect that they've kept it going for so long I'm going to actually look at um the, the Steam charts for this one I think I'm going to look at the Steam charts I like some of the most played games now let's look for some let's look for some like some some long term games I mean, Counter-Strike. I mean, honestly, Counter-Strike getting Labor of Love. They don't recommend it, but... But it is, like, the next version of it, so it's kind of weird to give it to that. Actually, do they even let you? Oh, shit, they might not let you. Wait, do they let you put it on Counter-Strike 2? Oh, they don't. Oh, wow. They don't actually let you. I mean, that's fair. It's a new game, I guess. That's fair. Um, even though it is just Counter-Strike at the end of the day. That's cool that they actually don't let you. Because I feel like a lot of people would vote for it. So, um, War Thunder? Potentially War Thunder. War Thunder's been out a long time. DayZ. DayZ's got my vote, actually. I think DayZ is arguably the best survival game out there right now. And the fact that they've kept working on it for so long... Daisy's got my vote. I'm going to give it to Daisy. Boom. Uh, best game on Steam Deck. This game is so good, you wanted to take it anywhere. So you grabbed your Steam Deck and did. Luckily, everything that made it endlessly playable at your desk got even better on the go. Uh, I have no opinion on this. Um, Baldur's Gate 3, Hogwarts Legacy, Diablo... Resident Evil, Lords of the Fallen, Dave the Diver. I feel like this is more like an on-the-go game. An on-the-go game, to me, is something you jump in and have a little bit of fun, and then you're able to jump out. Baldur's Gate is not that. Hogwarts Legacy is not that. You know what I mean? Street Fighter, you know, playing some matches on your Steam Deck. Could be good. I don't really know, though. I'm not like a Steam Deck gamer. You know what I mean? I don't have one, and I'm also not a mobile gamer, so I don't know. But I feel like it's something you can, like, jump on and easily play. You know what I mean? Um, Not something that you're going to like. I don't know. Baldur's Gate or RE while on the train. Yeah, that's just... Nah. You know what I mean? Like, Street Fighter, jump in, play a couple matches. I feel like that's, like, perfectly fair. You know what I mean? 
Like it's addictive, it's competitive, you're having a good time. Um I don't know enough about Dave the Diver to be fair. I think you can just like jump into that and play a little bit, but I'm not sure. Um Diablo? No, I, I think Diablo is a bit a bit too much because you can't really like pause it. You know what I mean? It's not short form. I don't know. Street Fighter, honestly, watching Street Fighter, I think they've done a really good job with the new Street Fighter. So if it's good on the deck, then I, I think I'll probably vote Street Fighter, to be honest. Again, this is one that I'm just like not super experienced with. This is it Steam Deck compatible? How do you know if something's Steam Deck compatible? Nominate Street Fighter 6 for most innovative gameplay. Bro, what? 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 It's a fighting game. <laughs> They're the same every year. <laughs> <laughs> I I mm, no no not not for me. It is verified on the Steam Deck. I'm gonna go with Street Fighter Six. Sure, I think that's fair. Um, I think that because it has to be a game that came out this year. I actually, from the stuff I've watched of Street Fighter Six, I think they've done a good job with the game. It actually looks good. As much as I am more of a fan of Mortal Kombat in terms of the characters and the art style and all that, like the like the the vibes that's going on with Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat kind of is a little bit shitter this year than Street Fighter 6, in my opinion, sadly. So, I'm going to nominate Street Fighter. Uh, better with friends. There are some games out there that just aren't the same when you play by yourself. Maybe you need to have a friend to watch your back. Maybe you need to have a friend that you can stab in their back. Either way, fun is awaiting those who gather friends together to play this game. <sighs> nominate Lethal Company. Yeah, people want... Um, People want, uh, people are really loving Lethal Company, right? Uh, is that FIFA? Looking EA Sports FC 24. Isn't that just FIFA? Why is it called FC? I don't know. Uh, Dark Tide, eh. Seen some people play it. It looks like, uh, chaotic fun. Yeah, I think the thing is with Lethal Company, though, it probably will win. And the reason it'll win is just because it's relevant right now. You know what I mean? I think it probably will win because it's relevant as of right now. As the like the votes just showed up. So it's like I kind of want to vote for something else. Um, because like games that release in like early, early in the the year is gonna be a lot worse off. Outlast trials. Outlast trials look good, honestly. Um Remnant 2. People seem to enjoy Remnant 2. I think that's another decent one. Um, it's funny how Payday 3 came out. Everybody was so excited. And then, like, I just hear nobody talk about it anymore. Like, who the fuck is talking about Payday anymore? <laughs> it's got mixed reviews as well. Oof. People were, like, so hyping it up. They were like, oh, my God, it's so good. It's going to be amazing. And it's like, yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't think the Payday games are as great as people think they are like they're good don't get me wrong but also like i don't know people were saying it's gonna be like amazing like i want to get too excited and now it's got mixed reviews and people aren't really talking about it anymore but to be fair i don't know enough about it party animals does have mixed reviews for some reason why does party animals have mixed reviews i think party animals look pretty fun honestly mm -hmm. Um, consider that one too yeah there's lots of lots of choices i don't know lethal company i feel like it's just gonna win because it's relevant right now it does look good don't get me wrong but mm, i don't know i don't know um sons of the forest remnant 2 outlast trials I think the Outlast Trials honestly do better as Outlast Trials than they do as, uh, what you call it? I mean, Lethal Company's got overwhelmingly positive reviews. 24,000. It only came out a month ago. Yeah, it's popular at a very good time. Very popular, though. Holy shit. 10 bucks as well.
came in a little image that says vote. Um, the company must win. It's in your contract. I want you to vote for Lethal Company for the Better With Friends Award. <laughs> for the Steam Awards. Um, currently working on fixing glitches and crafting new tacky furniture and wonderful, beautiful creatures. But that's not what this is about. Is it only one guy? Is it actually one guy make Lethal Company? Yeah, it looks like it's one guy. Impressive. He's made some other games, actually. Beautiful creatures. Made some other games. They're all on my wish list, actually. <laughs> funnily enough. Um, fair enough. You know what? That's that's cool to see somebody like a solo dev making like a cool game and people like really it like really popping off. It shows some of the good things that like social media and like content creators and influencers can do. You know what I mean, like really getting like a game like exploding, even though it's quite small. Because, like, without, like, influencers, content creators, stuff like that, it would just not... That just wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, small games would stay small. So, it's cool to see. Um, sure. I don't know enough about Lethal Company, but people seem to be enjoying it. So, I'll nominate it. And there's not too many better options. Because, like, my other option would be Outlast Trials. Not sure how replayable it is. But, I mean, it's got very positive reviews. Um, uh, no, I think... I don't know. Um, you hit it with that. It's already on my wish list. Yeah. No, I'm actually I'm gonna change my vote. I'm gonna go with Outlast Trials because I think the Outlast Trials did a good job of converting their already thing into a friend game, and it came out a while ago. But I'm gonna go with that instead. Lethal Company will almost surely win, but it doesn't matter. So gonna I'm still gonna pick Outlast Trials. Outstanding visual style. Visual style doesn't aspire to real-world graphic fidelity, though a noble goal in of itself. It describes a distinctive look and feel that suffuses. Uh, suffuses? Suffuses. Gradually spread through or over. I suffuses my bread. Suffuse. Oh. Suffuse. That makes more. That makes more sense. Suffuses. 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 I suffuse. Suffuses. I suffused. Suffused. I suffused the peanut butter over my bread. <laughs> um. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um. All right. What would be a good game for? Uh. It's standing visual style. Persona 5, Tactica, uh, it's just kind of like chibis, I'm not a big fan of that. High on Life, High on Life actually is kind of, kind of wacky. Um, Inward. Mm, it looks pretty, but I don't know about that standing visual style. Cocoon, I haven't seen this game before. Okay, I can see that. It's got a bit like quite a unique art style. Art looks nice. I do feel like it's kind of hard to see what's happening though, unless you're actually playing the game. It's not like immediately pretty to look at, if that makes sense. Pretty much everything is on my wish list, you're right. Yeah, people come in and say that they they have a game on Steam and it's already on my wish list, yeah. Um Eye on Life so far has kind of got my vote. Chance of Senar. Ooh, that. See, Chance of Senar, to me, that's an outstanding visual style. Like, that is, like, it's it's striking, it's different, it's unique. That's, like, what I would describe as an outstanding visual style. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. I don't really want to give it... Um, I don't really want to give it to that because it is kind of just copying Jet Set Radio. And that's not a bad thing, but like the visual style is just kind of copied from Jet Set Radio. So it's like, like it's, it's cool to have a newer Jet Set Radio type of game. Don't get me wrong. Unless it's made by the same people. Is it made by the same people? I don't think it is. If I was a small game dev and someone said that to me, I'd be insane catting. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um... 
so I don't know. I feel like it's just like a kind of copy copied visual style. I want like I mean, but you can say that about anything. You know what I mean? You can say like, oh, this copy this from this. You know what I mean? It's kind of just how shit goes. But I I mean like the whole game is supposed to be like kind of spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio. It feels like so. Void Crew mm, just looks like kind of Destiny sci-fi shit. That doesn't really excite me in terms of visual style. I feel like Chance of Senar is pretty cool looking. Wizard with a gun? See, again, that's kind of like an... like I feel like that's a cool visual style. Like, to me, that's a cool visual style. Because it's like, it's different. It's unique. You know what I mean? I like that they actually are giving uh, people suggestions this year. They didn't do that before in the past. Hi-Fi Rush. See, that's a bit, like, that's not, like, an actual... Hi-Fi Rush, honestly, does have a very striking visual style. It's not for me personally, but it's very striking and different. Hi-Fi Rush, honestly, isn't too bad. That came out very early this year. That might be a good vote. 16,000. Kind of want to look at those other two games, though, that I saw look cool. Chance of Senar. I haven't seen much of this. Uh, legends say that one day a travel will reunite the people of the tower who are unable to communicate with each other. Observe, listen, and decipher ancient languages in a fascinating universe inspired by the myth of Babel. I like the I like the style. I like the style. Are they trying to get in? They they do want to be nominated for outstanding visual style. I mean, hey, knowing what you're good at is not a bad thing. You know what I mean? And saying, hey, we think we've got a cool style. Vote for us. Wizard with a gun also has like a nice style, but it's a bit too like grimy. It's kind of hard to see what's going on as clearly. I think I'm I think I'm probably gonna go with the chance of center. I feel like that's kind of cool. Although Hi-Fi Hi-Fi Rush did Darkest Dungeon 2 wants to be nominated. Oh, Darkest Dungeon does have a nice visual style, to be fair, actually. Did that release this year though? Best game you suck at. I feel like that's probably better. Yeah, there's not too many other good options for best game you suck at, I feel like. I feel like I might put... Uh, uh, Lies of P. Lies of P wouldn't be a bad one. I think Lies of P is pretty good. Maybe Lies of P. Or Darkest Dungeon. Innovative style, Darkest Dungeon. Mm. Mm. Did Darkest Dungeon actually come out this year, though? Did it actually come out this year? Or was it in early fucking access? That's what I want to know. Yeah, it fucking came out 2021. Oh, and it was fucking on early access on only on the Epic Store? Nah, go fuck yourself. You ain't getting my vote. You ain't getting my vote. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you ain't getting a vote from me. Um, Alright, I'm gonna go with... Ooh, either Hi-Fi Rush or Chance of Senar. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't know. Ion Life is also kind of a fun visual style. It's very wacky over the top. People seem to like Ion Life. It's an outstanding visual style, though. Man, it's a hard choice. Hard choice. Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna go with... Which is the one that I like the most? I'm gonna go with Chance of Senar, because I look at that and I immediately think that's a pretty looking game. I'm gonna go with that, and it's an indie game. 
Most innovative gameplay. The designers of this game are at the front lines of creative experimentation, bringing in fresh perspective and brain-breaking surprises. This game delighted, inspired, and entertained with newness never played before. Ooh, what do we got? Shadows of Doubt. Shadows of Doubt definitely kind of gets my vote immediately, seeing that. Innovative gameplay, I think Shadows of Doubt is a very cool game. Um, Remnant 2? No, it's a sequel. How is that innovative? Baldur's Gate 3? Again, a sequel. How is that innovative? Lethal Company? Not a terrible idea. Um, Lies of P? No, it's Dark Souls. <laughs> Um, Starfield? No, it's Skyrim in space. <laughs> Resident Evil 4? Remake. Yeah, none of these options are good. I'm kind of thinking Shadows of Doubt. I think Shadows of Doubt deserves it. Forspoken? Eh, I don't think that's fair. I think Shadows of Doubt. That game deserves, definitely deserves attention in my opinion. My eye is watering. I'm going to go with Shadows of Doubt. I think that uh, it deserves deserves some attention. It's my vote. Uh, it wasn't early access, though, wasn't it? No, it's still in early access. Wait, doesn't that mean it can get votes multiple times? <laughs> um, It released on April 24th. Yeah, that gets my vote, definitely. I'm going with Shadows of Doubt. Boom. Um, next game would be best game you suck at. I think Lies of P wins it for me. I think Lies of P was actually really good. Without a shadow of doubt. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think Lies of P, I first saw Lies of P and I was like, oh man, this game is like fucking a Dark Souls, like it's just copy paste Dark Souls. But they did throw in some, they, they threw in some other stuff and the game is actually pretty well crafted and the world's cool. So I think Lies of P deserves respect. So I'm going to give that to Lies of P. Best soundtrack award. Ooh, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Um, Endless Dungeon for best soundtrack. Because, like, you have to kind of play these games to really know the soundtrack, you know what I mean? You have to kind of play these games. It's kind of hard if you don't play them. This is a hard one. This is a really hard one. It's a really hard one. Because, like, if you don't play them, how are you going to know? You know what I mean? Um, and I haven't played anything new this year, really. So, I think the only thing I can really do is... There you go. I do definitely need a new microphone. Microphone's booked. Um, I think. Oh, CSGO has already won before. How the fuck does Labor of Love. How did Cyberpunk get Labor of Love? The fuck? It's been one year. Bro, what the fuck? That game came out like really recently. Um, whatever. Um, Terraria has won before. Warframe, Warframe deserves it. GTA Five. When did GTA Five win Labor of Love? Bro, take that shit away from them. Somebody go and like collect that award. It was awarded to the wrong person. What the fuck? <laughs> Rockstar is awful. Rockstar is not a good company. They do not do good good things. I mean, it's still getting updates, sure, but like, some of the updates are bad. And they don't really treat their game with love, that's for sure. Terraria, absolutely. Warframe, absolutely. CSGO, absolutely. 
Cyberpunk and GTA. Eh, I think those should be maybe taken away. Um, I think Cyberpunk will earn it eventually, but it's only been like one year. How have they already gotten it? They got it last year? Weird. Fucking weird. Um, innovative gameplay. I already did that one, right? Yeah. Um, best soundtrack award. Yeah, I need to do that one. Let's skip that one and I'll come back to it. Uh, outstanding story rich game award. Some days only a narrative heavy game will hit the spot and this one packs a wallop. It's as gripping as any soap opera as well tuned as a prestige TV screenplay. Bravissimo for making us feel things. Um, I don't know how much the story in Baldur's Gate is actually the benefit. Um, I don't know. Star Wars Jedi Survivor? Eh. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Talos Principle 2? Maybe. I don't know what the story is like in it, though. Can't really say. The first Talos Principle had a really good story, but... I don't know for the others. RoboCop. I mean, come on. RoboCop's not really a story game. You're a RoboCop. You just fucking shoot people. <laughs> um, ooh, this one's a tough one. This one's a tough one. I don't really recognize many of these games. They're all on my wish list. But... Just because they're on my wish list doesn't mean anything. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's another tough one. Sit back and relax. This game is the antidote to a busy day. It's smooth. It's relaxing. It lets your worries melt away. This game is your moment of zen. Marvel Snap? I wouldn't say it's a sit back and relax type of game. <laughs> I mean, it can be, I guess. Um, a prologue, bro. You can't fucking nominate your game for a. It's the prologue. What the fuck, bro? What? How? How? <laughs> How can you ask for a nomination for your game for the prologue of the game? The game's not even out yet. You can't play it. It's not a thing. <laughs> what? What? How? How? How are people ask? What? How could a dev ask? I mean, fair enough. You know what I mean? It like you got it. It doesn't hurt to ask. <laughs> it doesn't hurt to ask. Um. Fuck, man, there's, like, hard options. I mean, Marvel Snap did come out this year, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, it was in beta. I mean, I, I have played it to s sit back and relax. I mean, I feel like it's a good game. Oh, I was 2022. It was 2022 that it got released. Been out for a year now. Crazy. Um, it's like, I can't put my vote on that. Fuck, there's still like three votes left. What are you going to vote for, Fluffkins? What are you voting for? What are your votes? Sit back and relax, huh? Oh, pile up. Pile up, actually. Pile up's not bad. Minor degen. What do you mean? What are you voting for? What are you voting for? Should I be scared? Should I be concerned? Pile up's not a bad game. Dave the Diver. People like Dave the Diver, right? I mean, that's a pretty relaxing game, right?
I don't think it's like a stressful game. What I voted for in that cat. Oh, category. No, I don't think Dave the Diver is uh, the gen. I think that's what I'm gonna go for actually too. I think it's a. I think it's a pretty chill game. I'm gonna go for Dave the Diver because apparently people really like that one. What'd you go for? Outstanding story, Rich. This is a hard one. I feel like you really have to play the game. Dave the Diver is what I voted for in that category. Yeah, you're all good. I figured it out. I figured it out. Took me a second though. Invincible. Is this any good? It's only got a thousand reviews. Man, story one's hard. Story one is hard because you have to actually have played it. You know what I mean? Like, you have to have played it. Story one's tough. Story one's real tough. RE4 because I like how they adapted the story from the original. I mean, to be fair, it's an outstanding story-rich game. I mean, it's not like innovative story or anything like that, so it's not a terrible vote. I don't know enough about it, though, I feel like. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad if that won. I feel like that's kind of fair. Kind of fair. Hmm. Hogwarts Legacy? I don't think the story is particularly good in Hogwarts Legacy, right? Starfield? Nah. Resident Evil? Maybe. I might go Talos Principle, but the problem is I haven't played it. I mean, it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews, though. It takes at least a bit of skill to change up an old story enough so that it feels better and unique while also not changing too much to the point where fans will be matched. No, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'm not disagreeing. I might I might put in the Talos Principle. I haven't played it, but I really enjoyed number one, and it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews, which makes me think they did a good job in number two. And I don't really have anything else I want to vote for, so I'm going to vote for... Dallas principle. I don't really have any other options. I mean, I can look at games that released this year, to be fair. Let's see. Starfield? Nah. Assassin's Creed Mirage? Nah. Um, Legend of Zelda's not on Steam. Star Wars Jedi Survivor? and eh, it's got mixed reviews. Um, Baldur's Gate 3? I don't think story's really the point of that. Armored Core? Don't think story's really the point of that either. Uh, Wild Hearts? I don't think that's on Steam. Um, Payday 3 is definitely a no. One Piece Odyssey? Not sure how that is. Um, System Shock's a remake. Sea of Stars, Scars Above? I don't recognize these games too much. What is Seas of Stars? I have it on my wish list. Scars Above? Stars above is not that not that good, apparently. Um, Chance of Senar, Forspoken. Again, don't think that's particularly good in the story wise. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not great, not great options for story to be honest. Spider Man Two, but again, I don't think the story is really the call, like the the main uh, main focus of that. Redfall, gross. Man, not not many good story games this year, honestly. I feel like not many good story games. Like, that doesn't mean they're bad games, but I don't know. Not really great story games, I feel like. Not anything, like, really gripping story-wise. I feel like, honestly, nowadays you really do have to go to indie games for good stories. I'm going to stick with the Talos Principle. I mean, I think... It probably won't win, and Resident Evil probably will, but I'll stick with Tell's Principle, and if Resident Evil does win, that's fair.
I think that it's also just like the same story. So I think I'd rather vote for something new. But to be fair, Talos Principle is a sequel. But I think a sequel is a little bit different than a remake. Best soundtrack. We can listen to some music. We can listen to some music and see what, see what, see what we got. Let's see if I can find some music. Endless Dungeon Soundtrack. Let's see. I'm just going to go through these people that uh, asked for their game to be voted for. And let's see what... Endless Dungeon is not a very good reviews, though. But it's about the soundtrack. Let's see what we got. This is the main title. Oh shit. Kinda nice. I don't know. You have to like. You have to play the games. So that's the thing. I was even singing. Endless Dungeon apparently didn't do that well. It looked cool though. I thought fun to play with friends too. Man, it's hard. It's hard to fucking because like you, I feel like you need to listen to them to actually have like a good guess. Kind of fucking tough, man. Uh, bomb rush cyberfunk. Let's listen to some bomb rush cyberfunk. That's gotta have good music, right? That's gotta have good music. Come on, come on. It's got to. Can't be fucking bomb rush cyber funk. Come on. Gotta have some good music. <laughs> oh god. Oh, that's kind of fun. It's based on like Jet Set Radio, I'm pretty sure, so. <laughs> this is fun though. It's kind of slower paced than I was expecting, honestly. I was expecting some faster paced stuff. It's kind of fun, though. It's kind of fun. I think that might be the end of the song. Oh, is this gonna drop? I wanna drop, come on. They're actually slower paced than I was expecting. I was expecting faster paced music. To be fair, they're gonna be different different parts in the game though. They're a lot slower paced than I expected. It's fun music though, it's very different. This is like some Daft Punk shit. Yeah, 
man, that's that's some Daft Punk right there. It's not actually them, but it sounds like it. Oh, I like this. Dude, this is a little bit faster. Okay, it's getting a little repetitive. Dude, the Jet Set Radio, some of this fucking Jet Set Radio fucking songs, though. Dude. Some of the fucking Jet Set Radios kind of go crazy. Um, some of the Jet Set Radios kind of go crazy. I've never played it, but... Hmm. I don't know. I haven't heard. I haven't. I haven't listened to them. Some of the Jet Set Radio stuff is pretty good. Very funny. Like, like, like. It's very fun music. There's one that I this one. I like this one. I like this one. I have this one in my playlist. This is a good one. good music that is um that game's like a classic the people who love that like are really like really attached to jet set radio um and i'm pretty sure that's what bomb rush cyberpunk was supposed to be like kind of like a spiritual successor type thing um because that game came out ages ago right jet set radio is pretty old i'm pretty sure i remember i watched somebody play through pretty much all of it yeah 2000 Jet Set radio is back in back in the 2000s it's got like a very similar art style it's like the whole like rollerblading thing. Yeah, it, it's like you can just like just looking at it, you can see you can see the inspiration like bleeding out of it, which is really cool. Yeah, you can just see it all over the place, the art style. So I don't know what to vote for. Um, I don't even know if fucking Bomb Rush Cyberpunk has good music, but I might just vote for that to be honest. Um. People like the music. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to vote for. What did you vote for, Fluffkins? What did you vote for? Best soundtracks. Uh, based, let's do best game soundtracks, twenty twenty three. See what people are voting, voting for. Best video game soundtracks. I don't know, man. Tough choices. Tough choices. Top 10 video game soundtracks of 2023. Grand Theft Auto 5. 
What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> My man is living in fucking like uh, 2012 or something? Like what the fuck? Bro, 2013, man, come on, what the fuck? <laughs> Did my man fucking step in a time machine 12 years ago? Or 10 years ago? Like, what the fuck? Uh, does it have any music besides popular songs they bought the rights to be able to play anyways? Not really, no. There is some music that was created for GTA V. Um, I really like... Um, setup a setup song like one of the like the end game credit song that one's fucking good that's a really good song i don't know it just hits it hits you with the feels man i guess probably because you beat the game and then you'll hear it but um but other like other than that kind of stuff no i don't think so i don't really think so like it has majorly I and mean, like there is some songs that were created for it but nothing like too outstanding like some of the radio stations aren't like they have like fake songs on them like that were created for the game um, but it's also got, like, other stuff mixed in, right? Of, like, real songs. I mean, some of the GTA... Some of the GTA music does have fucking jammers. Um, I might vote for... Fuck. Yeah, you said you skipped it. I mean, that's probably what I should do, too. But, like, it's the one category I haven't voted for, man. Uh, so I kind of want to vote, but I just don't got no good options. Like, what are my options? These games all suck, bruh. They all suck. Where the fuck is the good soundtracks, man? I want some jammers. Um, I've skipped the VR category too. That's fair. That's that's perfectly fair, yeah. I should probably skip that one too, but um best indie game soundtracks twenty twenty three. Let's do that. I want some indie games. I want some indie game indie games. Somebody recommended Pizza Tower, Blasphemous 2, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Another another person mentioning uh I don't know, let's see. Indie games in twenty twenty three with great soundtracks. Another mention of Pizza Tower. I might check out Pizza Tower soundtrack. No, I think that's just saying it's a good game. Mm, Hi Fi Rush came out. What did I put in the innovative style of uh Visual style? I put Chance of Senar. What about Hi-Fi Rush? I like this. This is some... <laughs> Why the fucking cake Kona, man? Come on! Is this some guitar? Oh shit! This apparently is This is apparently the most replayed song. This is the best one apparently. According to people on YouTube. Does it not sound like the fucking USA theme song? Maybe a bit. People listen to this one a lot, apparently. Might be game related, to be fair. Maybe it's game related. Like something happens in the game.
This isn't that great. Maybe it gets better. No, it's still lame. Okay, well, I've lost faith in the people that... Ooh. This is kind of fun. This is kind of fun. Alright, we need another one. Alright, it's not the greatest. It's not the greatest. But it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, it sounds like a U song. Wait, which one? This one? Does it? This just sounds like fucking... Like, speaker feedback. This one? This one. This one. I don't know, it's a bit too slow. It like kind of slows down weirdly. Oh, that part's good. It's not bad. All right, what about Pizza Tower? I wanna see Pizza Tower. Their Pizza Tower soundtrack. I don't know anything about Pizza Tower, but people seem to love it, apparently. Very like, you can tell it's like, not 8-bit, but it's like, trying to go for that style, right? I don't know, man. There's not any great options, I feel like. Uh, I don't know which one it was, but not these. Ah, oh, okay, it's all good, it's all good. What's the, what's the play, man? What's the play? What's the play? I don't know. I don't know if any game really has fucking great music this year. Not great music. They have good music, don't get me wrong, but like I don't know about great music. I don't know about great music. I don't know. I wonder what's gonna actually get up there. Like in terms of votes. Because I don't really see uh, anything like really standing out to me. But you know, there's like a wound on my head. Not a wound, but like it hurts. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you what you guys think. This game's not out yet and it still wants to be voted for. It better fucking have its soundtrack on YouTube. Give me your soundtrack, bitch. Nope. Doesn't exist. Well, you're not fucking getting my vote then. Not getting my fucking vote. How am I supposed to vote for you if I don't know what your soundtrack fucking sounds like? That's not how this works. Hey, I'm not just gonna vote for you just because. Okay, I need to know what your soundtrack actually sounds like. Sprawl? 
I mean, this looks like a fast paced. All right, let's listen to this. This will be the last one. This is like a fast paced arena shooter. So if it's going to have fucking good music. Like if it's a fast paced arena shooter, it better have some fucking good music. I mean, you want you want that shit to be jamming. So let's see. Let's see what we got. I want some fucking good, good. I mean, it's starting off, starting off pretty, pretty, pretty intense. I'm hoping it, go it fucking goes hard. Thank <laughs> Chris to see that for a second. Nothing's happening. We're gonna skip ahead. Okay, this is just the this is just the theme tune. Nothing really happened. Okay, that's that's not it for me. Oh, right. we're gonna skip to the next song. That was a theme tune, to be fair. Nothing's really happening. Oh. Oh shit! Where did it drop? Okay, here we go. <laughs> kind of fun. I, I would I would play a game to this. Gotta switch it up though. I, I, it bothers me when, um, what game is this I'm voting? It's called Sprawl. It's like a Doom Arena shooter, it looks like. Yeah, it looks very Doom-like. That was just the first two songs. This is fun. It's got the thumps. That's what I would call it. Just those, those, those like hard thumps. A little bit repetitive though. Yeah, I mean, I just skip forward 30 seconds and the same thing's happening. This is like some fucking club music. <laughs> oh shit I like this wait I gotta listen to this one for real I gotta listen to this one for real I like I like that that sounded cool Oh, I like this. See, there's a little bit of variation. That's all you need. A little bit of variation so it doesn't sound like the same things. A little bit like it went lower, it went deeper, and then it like it changed. You know what I mean? Like you don't need it to change too much. Like just enough that it doesn't sound repetitive, in my opinion. See now it's going on a little too long. <laughs> What's this one? Got some cool music. What about this one? Ooh. 
It sounds like it's about to go hard. This is like some headbanging music. Fun music. All right, last one, last one, last one. This is a bit of a longer one. It's hard to know when the beat is. But it is a video game soundtrack at the end of the day, and like sometimes these combat games, like they will go on with the same noises, and it's not as repetitive when you're actually playing the game, if that makes sense. That is something to keep in mind. Because like when you're listening to it, it's a bit different um, than it is uh playing it you know what i mean so definitely worth worth considering that um i don't know man it's a tough category it's a tough category i don't think any games really like knocked it out of the park soundtrack wise this year like i don't know it doesn't really seem like there's like many people talking about anything either bomb rush cyberpunk a lot of the people when i looked it up a lot of people seem to say like they like the jet set radio music better which is a little bit unfortunate but to be fair it can be a tough act to follow so it's like kind of fair jet set radio has some jammers um people are saying that it's not bad but it's just not as good as jet set radio which is can be a little bit disappointing as like a spiritual successor right i don't know it doesn't really look like there's any great games in terms of uh soundtracks i mean fucking crab champions wants you to fucking vote for it i mean is, is crab champions a jammer like does Crab Champions have a jammer soundtrack? <laughs> Should I check? I mean, like, is, are we gonna jam out to some Crab Champions music? I mean, uh, they want to be voted for it. They want the vote. Not bad. Okay, okay. Give it time, give it time. Oh shit, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't expecting it, but I don't hate it. Not bad, it's not bad. This is a longer song and it's got very low retention. Doesn't sound bad though. That part this is probably one of the lowest retention songs. Not bad. We got Beach Funk.
After dark. This does sound like some crab music. I'm not gonna- I don't have time to listen to all of them. It's 28 minutes long, so that's why I'm skipping. I know skipping music is kind of not good. It's like it's about experiencing the music, but we don't have all day. Not bad. Not bad. For a game that's about crabs, I wouldn't expect as good music. I think that first one went the hardest, though. I like this one. It's called Jellyfish. I like this one. This is the most this is the most replayed one though. We'll listen to this one. I feel a drop coming on. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's pretty fun. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. I like that. I like that. Thumbs up for me, Crab Champions. You do get the... I, I respect you asking to be voted for. I expected you to have some terrible music, and you did not. So, I I respect. I respect you asking for it. Should I vote for them? Um, I don't know, man. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Maybe I, maybe I should. I'm going to vote for Crab Champions. Fuck it. I got, I got no other votes. <laughs> I got nothing else. I'll go for Crab Champions. Oh, I think it was an April Fool's game, too. I like April Fool's games. I like April Fool's games. Sure, I'll nominate Crab Champions. <laughs> Alright, I think that is it. That is all the games nominated. Um, it'll be interesting to see what gets through to the actual voting. It'll be interesting to see. I think all of the games I've voted for are games I don't own. Yeah. I really hope Daisy wins Labor of Love. I think it deserves it. Baldur's Gate 3 probably almost certainly wins Game of the Year, which it probably deserves. So, I think I've got some good votes. I'll run through all of them again, just in case anybody wasn't here before. Game of the Year, Baldur's Gate 3, I think it deserves it. I think it's the only like really remarkable game that's came out this year, and I think it appeals to a large group of people, and it's quite well made. Uh, VR Game of the Year, I'm not big on VR games. I put Ghosts of Tabor because it looks interesting and it has good reviews so um but labyrinth was another option labor of love i think daisy deserves it i think that daisy has been fucking they've been working hard to make that game great and it actually is like one of the best survival games in my opinion right now um if not the best best game on the steam deck i went with street fighter 6 because there wasn't really that many good other options um and i think that it actually street fighter is actually pretty good this year and um the modern controls versus classic controls too is a really nice like thing that they added and like a cool optimization for fighting games um or not optimization but like innovation for fighting games to like let more casuals play so i think street fighter deserves some kind of respect and appreciation this year um better with friends i went with outlast trials i think lethal company will probably win um to be fair actually I probably do think that Lethal Company deserves it more than Outlast Trials, but I haven't seen enough of Lethal Company 
Um, I think Lethal Company is going to win regardless, though, because it's just relevant right now. You know what I mean? Um, I'll put Lethal Company, though, because I do think it looks cool, and I respect solo developers a lot. So I'll put Lethal Company. I changed my mind. Um, outstanding visual style. I went with Chance of Sonar. I was gonna thinking Hi-Fi Rush, but I went with Chance of Sonar instead. There was one other game I was thinking of, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, High on Life potentially as well. But I went with Chance of Sonar because it like it just strikes me as like the most outstanding visual, most innovative gameplay. I went Shadows of Doubt because Shadows of Doubt is a really cool game. Also, kind of a one-man developer team and very ambitious. And the cool, the game is like pretty innovative and quite unique. Uh, it's not like other things. Best game you suck at? I went with Lies of Peaks. I think it's actually really cool. Um, it does start off as feeling very much like a Dark Souls clone, and not like in a bad way, but just like not really anything new. But then as you play more, it like expands and shows you more. Like it has innovations, and they actually did a good job. The world is cool. The gameplay is good. All that stuff. Definitely better than Lords of the Fallen, in my opinion. And best soundtrack, that was the one I found probably the hardest. So I went with Crab Champions because, fuck it, they, I like an April Fool's game with some crabs, and it's got good reviews, lots of reviews as well, and it's got a cool soundtrack. So fair enough. Sit back and relax. I went with Dave the Diver because everybody seems to love Dave the Diver and think it's a pretty chill, fun game, well made. So, and Outstanding Story Rich was also a pretty tough one. I don't really feel like there was many good story games this year. Um. Resident Evil 4 is potentially, but it is a remake, which I feel like doesn't really deserve to get any kind of reward for its story just being remade. Um, but apparently the story has changed. I don't really know much about that, though, so it's kind of hard for me to comment on that. Um, so I went with Talos Principle 2 because it's got good reviews, and I really like the Talos Principle 1 story, and I couldn't find anything else to vote on. So even though I haven't played or seen the story of Talos Principle 2, it's got good reviews, so I assume that the story is good and because the story was a pretty important aspect of the first one so um those are all my choices those are all my choices it was fun it was fun i enjoy doing the steam things um the way it works for anybody who doesn't know is that it just all the nominations go in and then whichever game has the most nominations um like whichever like top five games that have the most nominations are available to be chosen from maybe top four um so your nominations are like voting it's like basically two rounds of voting that's basically what you can look at it as it's two rounds of voting but the options get severely limited the second time around so but i think the steam awards is always really cool actually it's cool to see what like communities are really like banding together for their game and games that people are like fond of right now i think that's a great way to look at it not really like super like you know, deserving of the rewards all the time. Like, Grand Theft Auto getting Labor of Love is kind of questionable. Cyberpunk getting Labor of Love after only one year is kind of questionable. Um, I mean, like, No Man's Sky kind of deserves it more than Cyberpunk for sure, in my opinion. And there's definitely been some other games that have been like, huh, I don't know if it really deserves that. But a lot of the time it is just developers can ask for a certain award, and if their community is happy with them and thinks they deserve it and you know, there's enough of them, they can vote for it, right? But some games do get it and deserve it, like Terraria, Warframe, um, uh, CSGO. Those are all very much deserving of the labor of love, I think. Like, those are all games that, like, really have, like, fucking been long-standing for a long time. The developers have continually updated and kept them, kept them in very good, good spirits by everybody who plays them. I mean, like, you never hear Terraria fans unhappy. You never hear CSGO fans unhappy about something. Actually, you do. You do. But that's just because they're vocal. <laughs> vocal vocal complainers. Um, don't really hear Warframe fans being unhappy about anything. Warframe fans seem pretty happy all the time. So, and I mean, they seem to always talk about how great the developers are. That's always a good thing. CSGO people, honestly, like, the actual game is good. Valve does do good changes, but it's hard when your game is that competitive. You know what I mean? Like, if you're, if fucking other games were that competitive, there would be complaints as well, because it's about the competitive, like, integrity of the game and stuff. So, saying that 
you know, you never hear Cisco fans complain. It's a bit requires a bit of an asterisk because you're going to hear them complain a lot more than others. But that was a good time. Nominations done. And then I'll do I'll do the votes again when the votes come around. I'll do the votes as well. So that'll be a good time. That will be a good time. I do enjoy doing it every year because it's fun to reflect on gaming and stuff. So hopefully it was fun to talk about it, share, share the chat. Um, but now we will actually play some games.